Hi class. Some of you have already worked on your assignment one, so here we are going to try to answer the question that a few of you have asked. Why do we need to describe use cases? Why do we need to create a fully developed use case description document? Now let me ask you this question. Build your own vehicle. What does that mean? That's a use case that almost all car manufacturer companies have on their website. And if you've done that once, you know what it entails. But if you've never done that before, that's confusing for you. So the use case can be familiar to you if you know the business logic. And it could be a mystery to you if you don't know that. So this is build a vehicle. And you know, we go to the website. Um, you choose your model, year, features, depending on the car and the model. Um, several different phases you go through to pick your features. And then they give you uh, the price code at the end. So we need to describe use cases for people who do not know as much as we know about the business domain. And there is a brief description that is here. A customer selects the model. The system displays the options. Customer selects all the options and the system displays final result and suggested retail price. So this is enough for you to understand what goes on, but it's not enough for your designers if you have different people in analysis and design phases to understand what this is going to um, um, be in terms of system design. So we have another document, we call it a fully developed use case description. So we, we move on from this uh, brief description that helps anyone to understand your features if they're not um, familiar with the business domain that you're working on to a fully developed use case description document like this and you work on this document you know what it has i just want to highlight a few areas first of all use case name and scenario if um you didn't know the case study in the book this is uh, uh, sbru spring breaks are us um resorts they uh, they join the system and they post their uh, promotional uh, vacation offerings, availabilities for students who are on their spring break. And the students can um, can join the system, uh, reserve uh, vacations, they can create groups, they can uh, post comments, they can share pictures. Um, so the way the case has been described in the book is that they, you can um, reserve um, your accommodations um, also, it has a social um, network component added to it. Uh, um, so, adding a new resort is your use case name. Are there different ways of doing that? So, this is a new resort who wants to be part of SPRU um, to attract those students, um, um, students on their, who are on their uh, spring break. Um, scenario is um, the way it is uh, done. So, if you can do it only in one way um, a specific use case can be done in only one way and then the name of the scenario is the same as the name of the use case if you can do it in different ways then you would have the use case name and one of these tables for each of the scenarios and the example we usually use is the purchase an item so you can purchase an item from JCPenney online you can purchase from store and you can still believe it or not you can order by phone so order by phone order by going to the store and order um, uh, through the website there are three different scenarios of uh, submitting an order or purchasing an item um, and the reason why we need a different use case description for each of those scenarios is that the steps that are taken and the actors that are involved are different for each specific scenario. If you go to the store, you're not the person who are interacting with the JCPenney um, uh, sales uh, system. If you're calling um, 
by phone you are not the person who are interacting with the system but if you're uh, working with the system online you are actually the person who interacts with the system so the actors are different the steps are different and the information that are exchanged are different for that reason you would need a fully developed use case description for each scenario of a specific use case now we're going to keep it simple for the space colony so if you have a use case i'm sure you've just picked a specific scenario triggering event something that happens in outside world that um initiates the process um Brief description is what we discussed, related use cases, like if you purchase an item, a redeeming a gift card is a related use case. Stakeholders, people who have stake in um, the use case, uh, preconditions and postconditions are the other two areas I wanted to highlight. Uh, preconditions, postconditions are about the state of the system before and after your use case has been or can be completed. Um, so state of the system is in your data yes how do you keep the state of the system or keep track of it by having your data so when you think about your precondition think about those data points what should be your data base and what should happen to your database after your use case is completed pay attention to these i'm going to make uh, sure we go over this again before the exam usually i have a question or two on a fully developed use case description and usually i ask the students to come up with those preconditions and post conditions so after you look through this exam and you work on your assignment one which you have some of you we're going to make sure we are clear on precondition and post conditions before going to your exam. Um, flow of activities, the same as you did for your activity diagram, and exception condition, things that can stop your use case. This is pretty um, complicated, that's why it's part of your assignment one. Uh, but if you know, um, if you think about your use cases, features of the system, buttons that people um, press on their touch screen, um, and you like you put yourself in shoes of the stakeholders or end users things become clearer what i want you to do is think but do not overthink um let's go to the next page and this is a system sequence diagram um that does the same thing as you did in your activity diagram some of you worked on system sequence diagram some of you didn't um depending on how uh, you could um, um find time we have time till june 15 to revise and resubmit if you wanted to take advantage of that offer please do so um but you have the actor you have the system the system is at the black box and you show flow of activities the same way as you did in your activity diagram so system sequence diagram and activity diagram they does the same thing the only difference is that for system sequence diagram these names are closer to what you have in your code these are method names and you can show data parameters this is something that you didn't do in your activity diagram but basically their purpose is the same show the steps and one reason I have it with the fully developed use case description is that this is the flow of activity here and you can just translate that to a visual uh, representation like uh, what is shown here uh, for me it's important to know that you can describe a use case and you can think about the steps and you and I believe a hundred percent of you have done that really well in your uh, lab assignment that I've already graded. Now these visual tools I need you to practice on and we're gonna work on it, um, uh, look at some of other examples and um, uh, we make sure um, during our one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation also we talk about some of the details that perhaps are still a mystery to you. Alright, thank you and see you and talk to you soon.